I'm about to attempt to turn this block of wood into the perfect little lipless crankbait. You heard that right, perfection. Just kidding, my perfect version of a lipless crankbait. I have a piece of Tupelo wood, and I have a good reason to make this. Tis the season for some lipless crankbaitage. But yes, everything that I think should be put into a lipless crankbait to achieve the title of my perfect little lipless crankbait. That sounds very Oprah-like, you know? My favorite, my perfect. You get a lipless crankbait? Sorry, it's just gonna need to meet my standards. So, this should be interesting. This is how I prefer lipless crankbaits to be. Let's go. Man, that's freaking weird. I cannot draw today. Why did I draw that? Jeez, one sec, guys. Let me draw this off camera, because I'm having some insecurity issues, I think. I hate it when, I don't hate it, but, I hate it when uh, I'm trying to draw out a bait, and I'm thinking hardcore about every other bait that exists and trying to stray away from everybody else's design because in the bait world, everybody's a rabidly hyper in tune with, you know, the way other baits look and then they'll say you copied. So it's like, can't do that, can't do that, can't do that, can't do that, can't do that. And it's just restrictive is all I'm saying. I'm not saying, I'm sure in tons of other departments of the world, you know, with making things that it's the same way, but not even a lot of you try to say that I make baits that look like other people's baits. It's, it's not really even a thing. It's just hypersensitive about it, probably to a fault, you know? You gotta be careful about that. Just make whatever you wanna make and disregard everybody else's opinion. Good ideas are plentiful and universal. You're probably gonna have the same idea that somebody else had if it's good. A lot of the time, good ideas are not original because to make a good idea good, other people are gonna think of what's you know, a bunch of people are universally gonna like and then you do the same thing that somebody else did and, you know. I want that to be longer. I thought I wanted this shorter. I want that to be longer. I need a new piece of wood. This drawing is taking forever. I think I've done it. I think that's it. There's some weird stuff going on right there, but I like it weird. Perfect. A big reason of why lipless crankbaits have the action that they have is because of the way just the chamfer lines are on these things. Notice up there on the head, that's like the forehead of this thing. Those chamfer lines are almost non-existent, but they still come down the side, just a slight taper. And a bunch of this is flat up here, catches the water so it can do its thing. Otherwise, every other chamfer line is about the same, except when I get back to the tail, I always narrow them a bit back here and on the bottom. I have a feeling I'm gonna narrow this thing out a lot, actually. It's not gonna be that shape. I kinda wanna bring it almost to a point back here and on the back of the belly here, but leave the front of the belly nice and chubby. Maybe, I haven't decided yet, but that's a thought, maybe. Oh. Good news, fellas. Hunter15973 on Instagram said that he saw my lipless weedless jerkbait video that last one day that I did and he is familiar with the tubes where I snagged it, tried retrieving my bait and got it out of the log it was stuck in. So he has my bait. Keep it, dude. If you catch a fish with it, I'll like, give me a picture and I'll like 
put it on my Instagram or something. Other people can make it official too. I hope not a lot of people are familiar with that spot. I like that spot. I think I just decided to keep it chunky. I prefer a hard body chunkier bait actually. Ah, Bob Saget! I'm just kidding. I don't have anger problems. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it chunky, but then I'm gonna do things to it while it's chunky, like little cuts and shapes. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna look good. Leave your baits chunky, fellas. You can definitely go too skinny on a long tail like this coming off of a bait. That is close. That might be too skinny. But I think I'll be able to do things to the body like I was just weirdly saying, and it's gonna make that tail not look so skinny. It might not look too skinny right now. It's, it's all opinions. I like it though, when it's a long tail off the back. You can put paint back here to make it look different. You, do, you can do stuff with it. It's all about doing stuff to things when you're bait making, you know? Here's some of that shape I was talking about, fellas. Give it a little lateral line ridge. Is the best name I could come up with for this. Number one thing after I finish carving this side is carving it the exact same way on the other or else you lose symmetry. And I'm going off of feel. I don't have any other lines except this center line, so I need to just feel how much material to remove on the other side. And look at it, you know. You can always look at it, but feel it too, guys. Get in touch with those feelings. Put a new blade in the Linux Gold. Amazon had this knife, by the way. Hallelujah. Everybody's saying my Amazon link don't work, and I still haven't fixed it. But Amazon had this knife. <laughs> I've been enjoying it. Just a solid, solid lockup. No wiggle. That's what you're looking for. Man, it's not easy making that line straight. Carving to it from both sides at the same angle. I'll show you what I got after I'm done toiling with this for like a half an hour. There. That's gonna be a beautiful part of this bait. A little bit of extra gillage down there. Mm-mm-mm. That wood needs some sealer. I might do some carving on it after it's dry, but look at that. I wanna put sealer on it because it's kinda of cracked and crusty up there towards the mouth and in other spots, and once you get the sealer on it, it'll expand the wood as far as it's gonna expand and then you can sand it down and have a super smooth finish on all those details. Oil-based polyurethane for this one. I don't really have a reason why. My tape did not work. Bob Saget. 
I can't even use that, it's too thick. It's a goopy mess. Water-based polyurethane for this bait, and now I have a reason why. Synthetic modeling clay. It's gonna be a two-part mold. Did I say I'm making a mold of this? Hopefully I mentioned that. This clay is kind of frustrating. It's super like sticky and I don't want to get it on the master and make it all nasty. I don't know if that, this might have been clay that was meant more to make the master, not to embed the master in. I should be able to manage, but I'm kind of annoyed. Being annoyed is part of making something. You have to learn to manage. Most things do not want to cooperate. Just manage your emotions while you're making them cooperate, you know? I'm gonna stuff this puppy in here. All right. It's in there, not looking back. I don't care about the other side of this bait right now. We're getting a nice finish on this side for now. Everything needs to come up to the seam line. Just adding clay until it's there. I'll get back to you when it's there. It is quite a while later. I think I have it how I want it though. Not the cleanest surface on the inside when you're talking about on the clay there, but that mold has a clean part line. Straight, crisp. It is exactly how I want it. Nothing else really matters. Let's pour some silicone in it. Actually, let's get some mold release in it. UMR. You guys want to see some baits? I just, ma I just finished up some baits here. Wow, my hair. I just woke up and I just finished up some baits here. Let me show you then. I decided that every once in a while, and this is, there's no method to this, it's just every once in a while, I'm gonna do up some spiffy baits and potentially sell them. So I'm not even selling all of these, I'm just, I might sell some of them. The rest I'm going to fish with. What do we got here? Look at this. Some gorgeous dead meat custom eyes on most of these. If that's not a pattern with some correct colors in it, I don't know what is. I wasn't going for anything super striking with this bait, but the whole, the whole image of it is just super striking. That's a fantastic one. Look at those colors. This is a deep diver. This is probably a medium diver. I haven't actually tested it. That's not a big lip. There's some shiftiness to those scales though. You see how towards the front, towards the head, they're more purple and they're silver to the back. I was going for that. Chartreuse ear. Little line down the body with some texture in there. Yeah, man. And here's a textured body. This is more like a jerk bait, twitch bait. See those subtle details though? I love that. When it all comes together like that. Chartreuse gills and fin. Extra gill detail and stuff. Subtle purple top, but it's mostly just dark. Super natural, except for the chartreuse. I was going for adding chartreuse into something that looks super natural, so. There it is. Look at this one. Topwater walker with lots of good color and detail. Salmon colored with the detail over the salmon and the chartreuse line under that. Giant fin. Gorgeous dead meat custom eye. That's one of the most beautiful dead meat custom eyes I've ever seen. I get excited about those kinds of baits. These are my favorite kinds of baits. Wooden, clear coated, all painted. It's just. It's just the best. Back to the bait, we're pouring silicone. I showed you those because that's drying. So once that's dry, we're pouring silicone. Alumalite quick set. Oh, look at that. I got a little hair in my mold, wonderful. Probably came straight out of my nose. Yeah, make sure we get the close up shot of the hair, okay. Let's pour this. Just took this out of the mold box. It went smoother than I thought, so I don't have video of it. It just slipped right out. That side of the mold looks perfect. See how the master's doing with the clay on it for almost a full day. It's kind of sticking, I don't like that. I don't like that one bit. Minimal cleanup, that's good. Hallelujah. I think I'll just be able to wipe it off with my thumb. 
Getting the fingernails in there too, which probably doesn't make for the best video. Digging in the crevices with my fingernail. Okay. Not the cleanest mold I've ever made. And I can see on the surface on the inside there's different colors. That means this stuff was old, but I used it anyway. I didn't get full mixture, but I've used molds like this before. It, it's usually fine. I have yet to have a complication from using old silicone. You just, you just get a bad finish on the inside. See how it's white? No, you don't. Anyway, other side. I have no clue if I should not be getting that on my skin or not, but it is. I'll let you know. I just sunk it in there like a glove. <laughs> like a glove. Do I have some baby powder? I had a container of baby powder. Can't find it. I hear that stuff gives you cancer anyway, so let's just stick with the whatever this is. <laughs> Next morning, after all that, this is what we're left with. This should open very nicely. Just pulling it apart. Easy peasy. One side's darker than the other because I pretty much ran out of catalyst and the proper amount is in this side, so. Let's cut some sprues and some vents and stuff. I always do it with a razor blade. Nothing more useful than a flat edge when you're making stuff. Okay, highest point on this lure in this mold is the back right there. So you put them together like such as and cut. You wanna cut off the least amount of material but still be able to pour cleanly. Because what I'm cutting off right here is going to have to be cleaned up on every single casting. The casting is going to have material jetting out of the top that I have to carve off and make look clean afterwards. So I think I'm going to do a vent, all the venting on this side, and it's going to come off the nose and the tail. And maybe a couple, there might be four vents, nose, that section, this section, and tail. Boom. Let's see how she pours. Don't forget your mold release, fellas. Half ounce of birdshot, RC3 casting resin, and glass microspheres is what's going to make up this body of this bait. I got my mold rubber banded together. I'm gonna pour a little bit of the resin that's mixed already with the glass microspheres, and then I'm gonna pour the birdshot into the mold. It's gonna settle into the belly in the correct spot because of the way I carved it. And then I'm gonna pour the rest of the resin over the top of that. I do that and it's gonna make a little like skin on the belly of the bait and then you pour the birdshot in. You're not relying on the resin seeping down through the birdshot to get to the bottom. It's already there, so that's why I do that. Probably gonna be about an ounce of resin, so I'll go 0.5 and 0.5. Swirl this stuff up good. I've kind of resorted to not shaking stuff so much anymore. I just, I just swirl it when it's a liquid. And do that for like a minute. A lot less bubbles, you know? And with this stuff, you're really trying to achieve less bubbles. Ooh, I need to think about how much of this do I want? Let's just go with one scoop for now. Lipless crankbaits don't need to have super buoyant bodies, but this will make it float. 0.5. This is some stupidly fast setting resin. Seven minutes, and you can demold. Your working time is about two or three minutes. It's already hot. Like this stuff just sets up on you right after you stir it, so. Get a good stir, real quick, pour a little bit. Dump that in there. I'm pouring and moving a camera. Skills. So I'm gonna get this all poured and then I'm gonna bang this mold around on the table. The cool thing about this resin too is that it expands. That saved my butt a few times because like I didn't have enough resin but it was still able to expand and then reach every part of the mold. So we'll see how that looks after just, just flat. Sometimes you gotta tilt these things like tilt it forward, tilt it back, whatever's necessary. But we're, we're, this is gonna be flat. I'm probably gonna make one more of these with less weight. All right, time for demold. Looking smooth. That weight is kind of placed too far back. I think I'm gonna do one more where I, where I tilt it forward, but that's looking looking like a fantastic finish. The first cast is always the worst too. There's like crap in your mold and stuff off of your master gets in the casting. The bottom had a lot of flashing. 
What the heck? Let's prep this one all the way so we can test it and just test this weight placement. But I'm gonna do another one where I get all this weight up to the head there. 1.2 ounce, that is heavy. I don't like changing variables where it's like, where it's not in reference to an issue. It's just, I change a variable because I feel, I don't like doing that. But yeah, I'm gonna put 0.4, no. I'm gonna put 3 8 ounce and then move it up to the head. I'm, I'm all ready to go fishing right now too. And yeah, 3 8 ounce towards the head. Okay. It doesn't need much, you know? From like that to that, puts that at the lowest point, so I think that'll be good. I don't know why I'm doing this on a stainless steel table. Just demolded that one and that is much better. There's still some lead back there. Here, one sec. That one's all in the belly and then that one's further up closer to the head, but there's still some back in the belly, which I'm not really appreciative of. I might have to really tilt this dude to get that lead up there, but Let's try these two out, see where we're at. See you on the water. It's raining. This place left me with poop all over my bait. Let's go home. It's like a week later from when I shot that and I sincerely apologize for an issue I already solved, so don't worry about it. I was having some inferior memory storage capabilities with the, with the cards and my cameras that I was dealing with at the time and I had to delete some footage because I literally fished with this bait in this video for 12 hours, multiple days of fishing. You'll see how many fish I caught. But because I fished so long, I had to delete some footage from my fishing because my cards couldn't handle it and then I accidentally deleted that, which is pretty freaking important, but I just, I deleted it. Bait worked great. Maybe you saw a tiny bit, but it, in my opinion, it had the perfectly tight little wobble. It feels good through the water. At this point, I fished with this bait for a very long time, and it feels very good going through the water. It's a heavier lipless crankbait. It wants to sink a little faster than normal lipless crankbaits, which I like. It's larger, but it's still, a sleek little fast wobble. So larger bait fish presentation and a lipless crankbait. I think it's perfect. I'll spill the beans. I did catch a bass with this bait when nobody else was catching a single thing using everything else. I stuck with this lipless crankbait and I was able to catch a bass. My other two friends didn't catch one. So it, it's super official. I'm probably not gonna put that in the video. I don't know why I needed to spill the beans. I just needed to say that my baits are better than everybody else's, I guess. All right, back to the video. My bait got all muddy. What do you think, Fanny? A lipless crankbait. Mm. I'm gonna make more of these, but we are 100% going to use this. Enough diddy dallying. Let's paint. Starting with white. Red. I'm gonna go red with this bait. Lots of red. A ton of different reds. That's my plan. Oh, duh. I bought and improved one of these and I'm still spraying into the air. I put a pipe coming off the top and I can stuff a paper towel in there. And there's a filter in here too, so I'm like double filtering. I got some pretty, I guess it's potent. It just, it stings my nose, this cleaner. So then I got one of these. The cleaner works really good for my airbrush. I needed this to use it. That's one that Iwata makes, but a bunch of different companies make a pot like that that you spray your excess stuff into. If you don't use one, I don't judge. I'm surprised I got that, because you know me. Risky Randy. Risky Richard, over here. Old Risky Dick. Look at me. Risky Richard. Anyway, next color. Fluorescent red, over the whole thing. As bright as I can possibly get it. We put the white down just so this red would be brighter. And if you wanted red, you'd pretty much just stop there and you'd have your red bait, because that's as red as it gets. But we're gonna stencil it up, we're gonna add stuff and make it pretty, unnecessarily. This is always unnecessary, but I kinda like that. That's what I like about it. And by this, I mean painting stuff with a lot of detail is always unnecessary, <laughs> but it's like, that's what I do. I'm not essential, that's what I'm trying to say. Just not essential over here. I hope you guys are able to quantify with your eyeballs how red that is because my camera can't even focus on it. It's that red. Now it's time for some of this stuff. Give it some texture, possibly some 
window screen scales as well. So what's gonna go over the fluorescent red is a pearl red. This ends up looking pretty sweet, fellas. I don't know what all this crap is on my bait, but I'm gonna spray over it. Trying to localize it to like the top flank, but isn't that gorgeous? So the bait is extremely red right now. I just put a little bit of pearl white in the, using the same technique towards the bottom, but I think to cut your eyeballs through all that red, we're gonna add a little bit of chartreuse as a lateral line right down the middle of this thing and kind of into the gills. That did something. Not very much, but that did something. I like it better than before. See the white on the belly? That gave it a lot of, I don't know, transitioniness. Let me get some more detailed work on this towards the head, darken things, lighten things. I'll show you what it looks like. Well, golly, I found some beautiful eyes for this bait and I'm yelling. Look at those, a little reptile, red eye pupil, perfectly colored everywhere else. That matches, wow. I have some color shift green to red on the top, but you can only see the green. I have the same color shift on the bottom, but you can only see the red. But those two colors or shiftiness aspects of this bait paired with that eyeball. Whoa, bro, looking spiffy. That's done, clear coat. So after getting all of those clear coats set, we have some straight up delicious fish candy right here. Undeniably tantalizing. Mm. I'm gonna go to a few different kinds of spots. I'm gonna go to backwater on the river. I might go to the river since I have multiple baits and if I snag one, it's not that big of a deal. And I'm gonna go to ponds. I think that's my best chance is just to kind of mix it all up and try everything. I very well may not catch a fish in this video. Have not been hearing very many success stories around here. I'm starting out with the uh, purple and goldish one. I know red's the best color for the spring, but I just wanna fish with this one because I like it the most. That's my lure choice logic. It always has been. Just fish with whatever you like the most. that that might have been a hit yeah it definitely wasn't not a hit it was a tree we flipped the tree over and got our bait back now we know that's there where in tarnation are these fish Nothing like a good old Canadian goose to brighten your day. Another pond. I hope you saw that. That was, that was one of the biggest pike I have ever seen in person. And it just fully porpoised, porpoised out of the water hitting stuff on the surface what in the world dude that was a massive pike that looked like a muskie that sure got me excited i'm gonna be burning this thing towards the surface let's go over to that sandbank man if we hooked into that thing i'd be good for the year just catch that i'm good dude it's doing it again I feel like I am one with this fish right now and I'm gonna catch it. There it is! Oh my goodness. Dude, I'm casting right over you. 
Hit the bait. Oh, it's official. Shad like my perfect little lipless crankbait. Man, I could catch that pike with this thing right now. It's official. Be free. Oh, that feels good. Making it official and all. I was beginning to get worried there. Oh my goodness gracious. Over here checking the price of Bitcoin. This pike is still doing whatever it's doing. I'm not going to catch this thing. I've been trying to catch this thing for over an hour now. It's just being a really stupid, weird pike. Doing really, really weird pike things. Putzing around in this pond full of shad like that. <laughs> it accidentally eats all that it needs throughout the year. And when it tries to actually hit a lure or a fish, it misses every time. That's what pike are. Come here, dude. Just come here. Dude, it's really official now. Two shad at once, like lipless crankbaits. Those are some good hooks on this thing. That pike is huge, and it's just been eating these shad. I'm glad we caught three fish today. It's been an all right day so far. You know, I wouldn't win you any tournaments or anything, but you know, I'll take three fish any day. Yeah. Dude, I've, I've lost count on how many fish I caught. Do you guys see that green iridescence over the, the shad dot? Who'd have thought? That looks amazing. Man, I need to like mold one of these. Beautiful. Little rainbow. Yet another new pond. Oh, I just saw a bass swipe at my bait and it's missing. Shoot, dude. That might mean another color. Well, I've been fishing for so long. My GoPro ran all out of juice. It's official. Bass-like lipless crankbaits. We already knew that. This is like less than a pounder. So if I catch more, I'll get my phone out and show you. Be free. That took forever to get that bass. Can you guys even hear me? Does my phone audio even work? Sadly, that's it. That's all. One bass. No, scratch that. I actually snagged like six of those shads. One bass and six shads. I'm joking about the shads, by the way. I hope none of you took that seriously. Um, I'm gonna chalk that up to, you know, it's really early in the season still. I got baits hanging right there. That fish need to bite as well. So let's just add that to the baits I have yet to catch a fish with and we'll get fish eventually. We'll get a good amount of fish eventually. The action of that lipless crankbait though, come on now. I know you didn't see much of it, but you know it's good. It's hard, it was very hard to get good video of that lipless crankbait because it wanted to go down so fast and I'm having to pull it up to the surface to see it. But you, when you do that, you affect the action and make it not what it looks like down there. So it's like, you're not even seeing what it looks like down there. But it ran, it runs amazingly down there. Fast action, not too much pull on your rod, but it's a big lipless crankbait anyway. I like it, I, I like it very much. Very good that I made a mold of it and I can make more and fish with it more this summer and in the fall and whatnot. And this spring, I'll be fishing with it tomorrow actually. Anyway, this video's over. This, this successful video's over. Thanks for watching, fellas. On to the next bait. I need to like mold one of these. Oh, my perfect little lipless crankbait. Bob, wow. Really weird pike things. Skills. That